Hey crafty friends, today we are going to create a really beautiful mini album from the Photographs and Memories scrapbooking kit. Uh, it has all the beautiful Dreamer Bow Bunny pages. So let's get started. We're going to start by cutting the white cardstock into five and seven eighths on two and a quarter and then two and a half and then two and three quarters so we're going to have three rectangles same height but different width now we're going to score on the one inch line turn it around and again on the one inch line what we're going to create are a little gusset in the middle like a, a spine and always score on the one inch line now because the rectangles are varied in their width so would the gusset in the center be varied in the width and that is exactly what we want so we're going to fold them and once they're all folded we can go ahead and glue them together according to their size the center is going to be the middle one is going to be the middle size and then the smaller one is going to be on the inside and the bigger one is going to be on the outside so simply center it and then glue it together always like to use my bone folder to make it nice and smooth and you just apply your glue on the gusset in the center because we want to create flaps for our pages now this mini album is going to be really special because it has no special binding in terms of the cover we don't need any chipboard we're just going to use cardstock so we have our flaps for the pages and what we need to do next simply reinforce the folds and then pick out some of the base papers for the pages from that 6x6 six six pack that we have in the kit and if you don't have the kit you can use whatever papers that you want just counting how many papers I need we're going to glue them back to back creating a sandwich with the flap in the center just going to see in a minute now these are the pages for the mini album and for the cover we're going to take our white cardstock again and cut two squares measuring six by six I think it's pretty easy so far so the first thing we're going to do is attach the white six by six square to the first flap on the left on the outside this is going to be the cover make sure it's centered it's aligned with the fold and then we are going to attach one of the pattern papers on the other side of that white cover and always make sure you align it with all the sides in the fold make sure you don't glue anything on the fold itself because that would make it pretty hard to fold the pages later so what we're going to do is keep on adding the pages on the flaps while aligning them with the pages before them and that little flap we want everything to be straight and you simply add the pages in no particular order pick your order according to the pages that you have whatever you think matches I'm trying not to put too no too much um, noisy patterns next to each other I'm trying to play with that but again it's up to you the order of the pages and it's really easy to use what is on the kit the, the six by six pages are already cut for you 
and they're ready to use so you don't need to cut any larger 12 by 12 pages you just use whatever 6 by 6 papers that you have or you can get the kit at photographs and memories scrapbooking.com sorry dot net you'll have the link under the video straight to their website to get the kit so I'm continuing to add all the papers by the way I really like this collection the beautiful dreamer by Bow Bunny it's really pretty even though it's full of purple and pink and I thought I'm not a purple and pink lady but apparently I am okay so the last page on the outside is again going to be the second white cardstock square that we cut and now we need two more pages two more papers to glue on top of the white cardstock on the outside and the reason that we used both the papers and the white cardstock is simply to make the cover a little bit more sturdy so this would be the front and then take that last page and glue it on the back that last paper and basically the mini album is ready now all we need to do is add the pretty cool stuff inside the pages and you're going to probably guess we're going to do a lot of interactive stuff so let's start with the first page so I'm using again I'm using the photographs and memories scrapbooking kit so I'm using whatever is in the kit and the first page is going to be a pocket so the size of the pocket is six by two and a half inches and I always like to cut a few of pieces from chipboard leftover chipboard that I have uh, in order to create the height that I need for the different mechanisms you can also use uh, foam tape but I find that using chipboard is a little bit easier and more cost-effective so I've cut those little strips of chipboard which I'm now going to use to create my pocket so I'm attaching them on three sides one in the bottom and two on each side and that would give me the, the volume that I need to create a pocket and insert stuff in it. And it doesn't really matter the thickness of the chipboard that you use. And then you attach it on the bottom of your page and you have a pocket that you can insert cool stuff in. Now this page is really cool because it comes with those squares that you can use it's a 12 by 12 it's part of the kit and I'm using this I'm cutting that it's good for to add a photo on so that is one of the inserts in the pocket and another page from the kit is this pretty page it, again it's all from the same bow bunny collection so I'm cutting the center you have that four hot air balloons and I'm going to create a little accordion so I'm scoring according to the lines of the page if you have a different page then you simply score on the three inch line the six inch line and the nine inch line and then you simply fold it and you have a little accordion mini album within the mini album that you can insert into your pocket so now I want to embellish the pocket a little bit so I'm cutting a square that is slightly smaller from the pocket I'm not going to give you all the measurements of the little square that I'm cutting um, because that would be too much information and it will be too uh, tiring just use the papers that you have and embellish it the way that you want I just want to teach you how to do all the mechanisms so I want to create a double pocket so the this is going to measure 
six inches by one and a half inch. So again, I'm using those strips of chipboard to create another pocket on top of the pocket that is already on the page. And this will give us a double pocket to insert more inserts, journaling, cards, photos, whatever you want to use your mini album for. So this is another pocket and I'm adding a few stickers. Again, the stickers are all in your kit. And in terms of uh, embellishing the mini album, I just want to say that um, just use your imagination. Use whatever embellishments that you want to add to your mini album. It's really cool. You don't have to do it exactly as I did. So I'm adding this little insert here. This is actually part of the white cardstock that I have left over from what we cut before. And since I don't want to leave it white, I'm just going to use some leftover pieces that I have from the page that I cut my pocket from and I'm going to use those leftovers to cover the white cardstock. Again, I just want to limit myself to using what is in the kit so I'm using it very uh, conservatively but you can take another piece of paper from your stash and create the, the, the insert. You don't really need to uh, do it exactly like I did. It's just an idea of how to use the supplies in the kit and how to create beautiful inserts even if you need to cover them or with other papers like you see here the squares are too small so I'm adding little strips to cover the other white parts. Now I'm going to add another piece on the outside and it all depends and again I'm not giving you the measurements because it all depends on the size of the insert that you decided to create. So I'm creating another pocket in the front of that insert by simply gluing it only on three sides leaving the top open. Just rearranging and my first page is done. So for the second page I want to cut all those three squares on the bottom and again fold them. It's always very helpful to score where you want to fold and again if you don't have that exact paper then you simply score on the 4 inch line and the 8 inch line. It's a 12 by 4 strip of paper. So this time I'm going to fold it like this and use this beautiful ribbon here. I'm going to show you how I use ribbons. I take a piece and then I tie it to the larger piece of ribbon. And once that's tied together, I can cut the other edge. This way I don't waste any ribbon. So I'm going to flip this over attach one edge to the back side and then the second edge to the back side. You can see that it's not tight but now I'm going to glue that to the page and once that's done I'll be able to open the ribbon and tie it properly. So this way I've used a ribbon exactly in the size that I need without cutting too much and wasting. Now I'm just going to add a few details to my page and embellish it. This is from one of the pages and then I'm going to add some stickers and again some details from one of the other pages. You see you have this beautiful page with all kinds of letters. So I spelled the word fly from 
the letters on that 12 by 12 page that is also in the kit so for our next page again I'm going to use these squares I'm going to cut two of them create another flap that opens to the top this time so I'm going to fold it love those birds and then put it there so I want it to since the background is kind of noisy so I'm just cutting another square to be another background that square by the way is five inches on four and three quarters so this dark background is going to be a pocket because I only glued it on three sides like you've seen and then I'm going to attach the flap on it so we have the flap and then we have the pocket and again just taking leftovers pages that I still have gluing them together because they're only they only have pattern on one side so I want both sides to have a pattern so I'm gluing two pages back to back and then I have a double sided paper now this is too big so I'm just going to cut it in half and have two tags and then remove since they're a little bit too tall remove quarter of an inch from the top and then I can insert them into my pocket like this cool right so for the next page I'm going to create a large flap so I need a white cardstock for that and I'm cutting it uh, to the size of 6 by 10 and then scoring it on the 5 inch line and folding in half so I have a really large flap and now I'm simply going to cover it with some papers and a really cool method that I like to use instead of st start measuring is simply since it's six inches in height and all my pages are also six inches so I'm simply aligning the page with the flap and then just cut the excess from the width so it's a really easy way of doing that of covering a paper without measuring first simply glue it and then cut around the edges so now I've covered the front and the only thing I need to do is put some glue on the back of the flap and attach it to my page now all those little leftovers I always keep them because I don't know if I'll use them or if I'll need to something so just don't throw it away yet now I want to create something cool in the front so I'm going to take this circle from one of the pages cut around it and create a pocket simply by putting the glue only on half of the circle like this only on the half see on this side and then the other side will stay open and then I can pull cool inserts in it again adding some stickers and then I can use these two squares that I have left as inserts this collection was made for interactive mini album so for the next page I'm going to do something that is really cool I'm going to use an entire 12 by 12 page and cut that into 11 by 11 sorry 10 by 10 10 inches by 10 inches that's the size and now I'm going to score in the center on the 5 inch line turn it and score again on the 5 inch line now I'm going to fold it like this 
and then fold it on the other side. Now what we need to do is cut from the center to the edge with a craft knife like this and then move very very slightly and cut again. So you see only a very very thin strip of paper like this and then we'll be able to fold it. So this is basically taking a large page folding it into a mini album size but you still have lots of room for photos in there and then glue it down again see how it folds cool and in order for it not to be too boring I'm just adding a few stickers and some rhinestones which are also in the kit just to keep it interesting and fun have these cool ands I call them stickers in the kit it's really cool for the next page I'm going to cut three squares measuring five by four and a half so I'm going to cut them and then you're going to see what we're going to create it's really cool so five by four and a half and then each square I'm going to score on the four inch line meaning creating a little flap that is half an inch wide like this so now I'm going to fold them and then you're going to see how I'm going to glue them onto my page so there's they're going to be like flaps opening like a waterfall and I'm applying glue on that little flap there this is the bottom flap that I'm attaching I'm going to reverse the side so it's going to be more interesting apply glue on the flap and then aligning it with the first one and attaching to my page and then you can see how each one is slightly on top of the other aligning it and then attaching so I see that I have room for one more here so again five by four and a half square and then scoring it on the four inch line folding applying glue on the little flap there and then we have four flaps on that page isn't that cool one two three four so now I'm going to embellish the front a little bit with a sticker and some other fun stuff from the kit and then I'll be ready for the next page now again this is the entire bottom of one of the pages or one of the 12 by 12 pages and what I'm going to do is score it on the 6 inch line and the 9 inch line and then fold them together or not together I scored in the wrong place the 6 inch okay so now I'm folding it in half and then folding it back again creating a half of an accordion and this entire thing is again going to be a pocket so I'm using my chipboard little strips like we did in the first page to create a pocket that I can insert cool things into so this is the three chipboard strips on the three sides apply glue and then attach it to the bottom of the page so you have a cool pocket with an interactive mechanism on its own now let's prepare our insert what I'm doing is taking three six by six pages and then 
cutting them on the five inch line. So these squares are six by five. And then I'm folding each square in half on the long side, on the six inch side. So now we have five by three squares. And now I'm going to attach them back to back and create a little book like this. And since there is a pattern only on the inside, the outside stays white, which I don't want. So I'm going to take leftover pieces and cover the front and the back of my little book. Again, if you need to cut the pieces for the cover, they measure three by five. And then another little leftover piece here. See why I don't throw the pieces? Because you never know what you're going to need them. So this is about two inches or inch and a half strip, which I'm going to put on the spine of the little book. like this. So this looks really cool. You can journaling inside, you can add photos, little photos. So I'm just adding a few stickers on the front of my mini book and that goes in the pocket. So for our next page I'm going to create a belly band. So you need a 7 by 2 inches strip of paper and then you score it on the half inch line from each side and then fold. So you basically get little half inch flaps that you can apply your glue on and then the belly band is six inches long. So you apply the glue, attach it to your page and then you have lots of room for inserts. So I'm taking all kinds of leftover pieces for journaling cards, for photo cards, insert all that in the belly band and this part of one of the pages so lots of cool stuff can go in there. So for our next page you need to cut one of the purple cardstock into a square measuring 5 by 12 and then score it on the 4 inch line and the 8 inch line and fold it into an accordion shape like this. Love this purple color. I'm not going to cover it. I'm simply going to attach a ribbon on the back side so I'll be able to tie it in the front because kinds of jumps and it doesn't sit where I want it to. So I'm applying glue on the back side and attaching it to the page, adding a few stickers and then I'll be able to tie the ribbon and it will be closed. And for our last page, I'm going to create another flap. So you need to cut your 12 by 12 piece into a 12 by 10 piece and fold it in half that it will be opening toward the top like this. And then another 5 by 3 piece that is going to be another pocket on the front of the flap. So just apply your glue to three sides, leaving the top open. And then I'm using again a few leftovers and tags, again, that are in the kit as inserts. And I'm going to take one of the six by six papers. Oh, I want to add this to my tag, this little bicycle charm. It's really, really cool. 
this is also in the kit and I'm going to take a 6x6 six six paper and create that little square folded page that we did in the larger scale but this one is going to be smaller but it's exactly the same technique that we can fold and create an insert. Now I'm applying glue to the back of the flap and attaching it to my page and basically my mini album is ready and all I need to do is embellish the front cover. So I'm just going to work on my front cover and you can follow suit or embellish it the way you want it. Again, I'm using all kinds of stickers and charms that are in the kit. And if you want to get this kit, just go to the link under the video. Get a lot of cool stuff in this kit. Stickers and charms and papers and embellishments. So I'm adding this pretty bicycle charm. And I want to add some words as well, just to make it a little bit more fun. So the large sticker reads, life was meant for great adventures. So that can go with anything that you want in your mini album, a vacation, a trip, a camping whatever it is that oh my bike fell I'm going to fix that so I'm going to measure my mini album now and create a really pretty box to put it in so I'm using two of the purple cardstocks that are in the kit and the first one just removing the edge and I'm going to leave the first one as it is and I'm going to score it on the two and a half inch line from all four sides of the cardstock. This would leave me a square in the center that would fit my mini album exactly with a little margin on the side. So on all four sides two and a half inches And then we'll be able to fold the cardstock. Always like to use my bone folder to burnish the folds properly. So fold it on all four fold lines that we scored. And then take your scissors and just cut all the way to the fold line on one side on each of the corners like this. These are super thick cardstock so they're perfect for a box. They're sturdy enough. And now what we're going to do is fold those little corners like this, glue them to the walls and create a box. Pretty straightforward. I think we've done it before in one of our other videos. So I'm applying the glue and in this case you can glue them on the outside, on the inside, it doesn't really matter. So this is going to be the bottom of our box. And then we're going to create the lid. Once you've all the corners are glued, you can take another piece and start working on the lid. And if you have a little 
leftovers or something is not straight like here meaning that the walls are taller than the little corners that you glue just simply cut them off like I'm doing make sure everything is nice and straight see how that fits snugly in there good so we're going to put this to the side and then start working on the lid so we take another piece of purple cardstock remove the edge and now we are going to score it on the two and a quarter line so we'll have the lid will be slightly bigger than the box and we'll be able to close it very comfortably comfortably so that we're going to do the same process of scoring folding and then cutting the corners and creating the lid the same way we did to the bottom of the box now in this case I don't want the edges of my box to be so large so I'm removing one inch from each side of my cardstock. You can do that before you fold, but I find it easier to do it after. So just remove one inch from each side of the cardstock, and then we can cut the corners and fold it into a box like we did before creating the bottom part the same process exactly like this so apply your glue to the corner and then glue it to the wall like this once you're done with that I'm just going to cover the lid with some papers I'm not going to cover the bottom part of the box you can do that of course if you want to this is the box and the lid looks really good and again if you have some things that you need to cut in order to keep them straight then just go ahead and do that like I'm doing now sometimes instead of measuring too much it's easier to do it after just with a ruler and a craft knife at least for me so you have those straight lines and everything is ready we can move forward with covering the lid and adding some embellishments to the lid so we're going to have a beautiful box with a mini album inside so this side is ready too okay they work perfectly together and they perfect they are perfect match so I'm taking one of the papers now the lid is bigger slightly bigger than a 6x6 six six, so I'm going to use a larger piece from the 12x12 12 12 paper and cut it to size if you want to know what the size is of that piece is six and a half by seven and the sides measure seven by one and a half inches again I'm using all the leftovers 12 by 12 pieces that I have because they're all bigger the sides and the top are bigger than the six by six pages that I have in the kit so I've covered all sides and now adding 
the first large piece to the front and now I'm simply going to embellish the front with some more pieces of papers so I'm just cutting them in an angle see because I don't want them to be too straight so I've measured, I marked the place with a pencil and then cut them in an angle and the stickers embellishment is all up to you just play around with, with whatever you have in the kit if you purchase it or whatever you have in your stash if you're creating this project without the kit again I'm cutting another piece in an angle and I'm going to add some more stickers and metal embellishments that I have in the kit I want to have a nice frame around the sticker so I'm gluing it on a piece of purple cardstock first and then cutting around and I also want it to have a little dimension so I'm going to add a piece of chipboard on the back just to give it a little bit of height before I glue it down to my lid and now I'm going to add some embellishments beautiful metal flowers, I really love them and some bling in the center of each flower that's never a bad thing, a little bling, right? some more stickers again how much you embellish it is up to you you can go really crazy or just semi crazy whatever you feel like and then I'm just going to add one piece of paper on the bottom of the box on the inside since that one is a bit small I'm going to add another strip of paper just to complete the cover of the inside of the box just on the bottom and that's it and our project is ready so I really l hope that you like this project let's go over everything that we did and again you can purchase the kit uh, at the link that you have under the video at photographs and memories scrapbooking thank you for joining me see you next time